Today is an important episode for you to check out if you work with children with speech sound disorders. So this episode is going to be a game changer because we're going to talk about the treatment target. Now, if you've heard me say this before. It's because my research backs it up. I would say the treatment target is sort of like food is to the body. So it's going to impact 80% of your outcomes in speech therapy. You could be doing everything right, but if you don't have a challenging treatment target, you're not going anywhere. It's kind of like if you've ever tried to exercise and get plenty of sleep, but your diet is off and you're eating a tub of ice cream every night, or if you're eating like I would <laughs> a big bowl of popcorn, you're not going to see the gains in fitness. Well, if you're not ingesting a complex treatment target, then you're not going to see the gains, even if you're doing everything else right. So we're talking treatment targets today. And specifically, we're going to talk about whether or not we should keep the same complex treatment target to allow for fluency and automaticity to develop and generalization, or should we change the treatment target up on a regular basis? So if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm showing you my CIS membership treatment targets that I developed and researched this past year. Last year, I used to just use my Ace of Spades S-Blend highly complex treatment target paragraph. And this has gotten me great gains, not only in speech clarity, but also in mean length of utterance and increasing the child's length and complexity of utterances. So this is a very powerful paragraph that not only results in great improvements in speech, but also great improvements in language. So this has gone through the research ringer already. But what I wanted to look at in this study is what if I took this ace of spade complex treatment target paragraph and I mixed it up with the king, the queen, and the jack, three other complex, not as complex, but complex cluster paragraphs that target velar blends, that target other fricative blends, and that target affricate blends. So what I'm doing here is I'm combining the cycles approach with the complexity approach, and would I get greater gains in doing this? Now, I think this research, if I do say so myself, is good stuff. Keeping everything the same, but looking at whether or not there's benefit to alternating the treatment target or keeping the treatment target the same. And unfortunately, it did not make the cut for ASHA. Even though it didn't make the cut for ASHA, I'm most certainly going to make sure to share it with you. And I'm going to use it and share it and do something different in my practice based on the results. So I can't wait to share this information with you. I really think this is something you want to consider when it comes to what you're going to do this school year, what you're going to do in your clinical practice, okay? I want you to test this out for yourself. So let's dive in. So first of all, I want to explain to you how I do research. When I do research, I look at one single variable. So I tell the graduate students I work with the same thing I tell the preschoolers. If we're going to do a research project. We need to keep everything the same except for one single thing. And this is known as split a, B, design. A, you're looking at one variable, B, a different variable, and you're comparing the two. So what we looked at in the study is we thought, if we look at a three and a half month period, so basically you can think of it as the spring to summer marking period. If we keep my ACE of spades, S-blend complex treatment target the same, would I get better results or would I get better results if I alternated it and every five weeks we changed the treatment target to a different treatment target that was complex clusters as well? What would get us better gains? Keeping it the same, which helps develop automaticity and fluency and generalization or spicing things up a little bit because we do know that 
Diversity is the spice of neuronal life. And when the brain sees something different, it tells the brain, okay, do something different, make new synapses. We have some new information here. So you can see benefit to both. What I did with all of these treatment targets is the child's IEP goal. These are three and four-year-old preschoolers that only have the eligibility of articulation impairment I looked at was stopping, grunting, gliding, and cluster reduction. Target all four of those goals, I went for the queen of blends, and that is SKR blends. So those are the most complex blends in the English language. If you want to make a difference, go for S. K-R blends. If the child cannot produce the R sound, do not do S-K-R blends. Go for S-K-W blends instead. And now when I say when the child can't produce R sound, I mean when you empty every tool in your toolbox out and they can't produce the R sound, at that point, do S-K-W instead. So we've researched all of the blends and SKR produces the greatest outcomes. It's the most challenging in the English language. It's the most complex to, to produce in the English language. It's acrobatics in the mouth to see these sounds are maximally distinct from one another. And that's my go-to. So all four of these paragraphs that I gave the children, the first line was the same. It was the one that contains the scrape. That's, that's the magic sauce and wonderful dust is scrape. That's in there. That's in every single paragraph. So I knew that I was meeting the children's IEP goals. I knew that, and not only that, I was giving them the best of the best top shelf. What I'm looking at is the additive effect. I'm looking at what about those other two verbs that I throw on this paragraph? If I change these two verbs up, will I get greater gains? And that's what I looked at in this study. So I had 26 preschoolers. I randomly assigned them. And what I like to do is just take popsicle sticks out of a jar. Okay, A, B, A, B, A, B. And they were equivalently matched in terms of severity, gender, age. These were two equal groups I was comparing. They're receiving the exact same intervention, exact same intervention is the only thing that's different is every five weeks, one group had a new complex paragraph. The other group did not. They stayed with my ace of spades, my queen of hearts, my, my S blend complex paragraph, which is the most powerful of them all. So what happened? Well, at the end of the three and a half week period, I tested the children again. And the group averages found, drum roll please, the ace of spades, the ones that stayed with the complex paragraph that I developed that's highly effective, very powerful, had on average 11 less articulation errors on the cap two. I like the cap two. That's my favorite test. It doesn't have the norming that the GIFTA has. The GIFTA has better norming. I like it for its content. It's also a shorter test, easier to give. And what I like is it doesn't look at every single sound in the beginning, in the middle, and the end of words. I don't think that's necessary. So I prefer the cap two. It's shorter, easier to give. That's a little digression. So that group had 11 less errors on average in a three and a half month period on the CAP-2. Now you might ask me, well, that's a single word standardized speech test. That's not real speech. What happens in conversation? Well, the latest research indicates that at the preschool level, now I'm not saying at the elementary level, this is at the preschool level, the children's performance on the single word tests are very reliable to their performance in conversational percent consonant correct speech. So this is a reliable indicator of their growth in articulation is single word tests. Now, there's a lot of variability between tests. Yes, 
So what we want to do is make sure to use the same test. In my case, it's the CAP2 for pre-intervention, post-intervention, because the CAP2 and the GIFTA are very different in their standard scores. And I'm only looking at the number of errors, because as I mentioned before, the CAP2 has very small numbers in their norming groups, so their, their standard scores are not very reliable. I'm comparing apples to apples. We're looking at the number of errors. So they, on average, the ones that used one single paragraph had 11 less errors after three and a half weeks. Now, these errors are not going to be big numbers because this is the second half of the school year. And the first half of the school year is when I get my major gains. The reason I get major gains in the first half of the school year is because in the first half of the school year, that's when we're getting the easy sounds done. The, the stop sounds, the easy fricatives, they're coming in really quickly. Things slow down in the second half of the school year. In the second half of the school year, we're hitting the liquids. We're hitting the L and the R. We're hitting the clusters. Things are getting harder now. Clusters L and R do come in much more slowly than P, B, T, D, N, K, G, F, V, S, and Z do. So the second group, they had on average slightly greater number, teen less errors. So with this small study of 26 preschoolers with three to four years of age that only had speech impairment, these are not children with speech and language impairment, these are children with speech impairment. What I found is there was a slight advantage to changing the paragraph every five weeks. So what am I going to do with this information and how is that going to change my practice? I did this study last year and I'm telling you about this study because it didn't make it for ASHA. ASHA did not accept this proposal, but I think this is important clinical research. So what I'm going to do with this study is I'm going to make sure to share this information because I think it's invaluable and I'm going to present it at a different conference. That's what I do. And then I'm going to go and put it on ResearchGate after I present it at a different conference. I have found that at ASHA conventions, I don't tend to have the best luck when it comes to research and support of the complexity approach. So I always have a backup plan, which is you need to share this information. This is going to innovate practice. This is going to produce better outcomes. I don't get anything for this. I'm not in academia but I do care about making the world a better place. And that means that part of your responsibility is to share your knowledge to innovate practice. So there was a slight benefit to changing the treatment target. Now, here I am the next school year. How am I going to change my practice? What am I DSDing? How am I doing something different? What I'm doing is every quarter, so we have four marking periods in the school system. I am changing my treatment target. So the first quarter of the school district, I used my ace of spades, and that is the s -blend target, three element s -blends. Now with this target, I tell the parents, if your child does not want to change to the next target when we get to it, that's okay stick with this target. This is the most powerful one. I've researched it. You're still going to get great gains. They're very comparable. So I make sure to tell the parents that's perfectly okay for them to say this treatment target one time every day instead of moving on to a new treatment target for them to say once daily. Now for the other children, they have a new treatment target every quarter. And that new treatment target is to replace the old one in which they're going to say the new treatment target and practice that every day. The next quarter, I'm going to give them another new treatment target. They're going to practice that every day. The next quarter, another new treatment target. So what I'm doing with my CIS membership and what I'm doing with myself, it's the same thing. I'm a member of my own CIS membership. It makes my life easy because my work is done. It's in one email every week. I pull up everything I need that week from that weekly email. Even my treatment target cards, they come out every quarter as a bonus. 
Okay, so now it's time to move and change to the next treatment target card. So for instance, in January, the next treatment target card we're going to do is effluence. So in my CIS membership, I'm going to release this researched, field-tested F-blend treatment target. So in January, we're going to pass all of these out to all of our students, and we're going to change the treatment target by two new verbs. So two months after that, I'm going to have the next treatment target, and I share that with my CIS group members. It comes in the email. Okay, now we're changing our treatment target to the velar blend treatment target. So it's just like the cycles approach, which every six to eight weeks, they change the treatment target. Every eight weeks, every two months, we are changing the treatment target as well to a new complex paragraph. What's staying the same in all of these treatment targets is my powerhouse SKR blend. So that's what's going to bring home the bacon is the SKR blend. That's going to stay there. That's the, like the that's kind of the plank or the push up of the exercises that works every muscle in the body in an efficient way. So we're going to keep that. And then we're just providing some variety with two new verbs every two months that the children are going to practice. So this school year, what I've done is I'm taking my research, I'm doing something different, and I'm changing the complex treatment target paragraph every two months. And every two months, we send home a new treatment target paragraph that we not only practice in therapy, but all the children are also practicing at home. Now, if the children have cognitive flexibility issues, because I work with a lot of children with executive function challenges where change is difficult, what do I do? Stay with the same treatment target paragraph. That's okay. Make sure to explain to the parents because of the cascading impact and we're working on the most difficult sounds in the language, we are going to hit the um, earlier developing sounds indirectly. So make sure to assure parents this is a research-based practice that not to worry, it will spontaneously develop the earlier developing sounds such as the K and the G and the F and the V. So these earlier sounds that we're not directly targeting, if you just use the queen of hearts, most powerful one of them all, will naturally develop. Will it take time? Yes. The F and the V and the K and the G are not easy sounds. They require a great degree of motor coordination and linguistic strength. Just know that it does take a bit time for these to develop, but it does happen. So you're on the right track. So that is the latest and greatest, and this did not make ASHA this year. I hope you were able to check out my other three presentations. They were all great, but this one was actually my favorite. And it was so important to me to share it with you because I think it's gonna impact your practice. I really encourage you to research your own practice. And that's because you're working with children's lives here. Time is your most valuable asset. When it comes to the children you work with, with communication impairments, it's even more so the case because neuroplasticity is at the highest level. You can change these children's lives early on. You do not want to waste one minute of your time. So that's why the details of your practice matter a lot. This is not statistically significant. Some children just respond well and they happen to be in that group to therapy. However, you pay attention to that. You say, okay, they had on average three less errors. So maybe there's something in there. Maybe I can do something different and I can see if I do get better outcomes when I do something different. You always have to be researching your practice. You have to do split test design and you have to look at every single detail of your practice and see, is it better to do A or is it better to do B? And the more that you do that, the better you're going to be at using these children's time effectively. So time is your most valuable asset. It's exponentially more valuable for the children you service, okay? So it's very important that every second of your therapy 
is used in an educationally rich manner that is going to produce maximum optimal change when the brain is at its highest level of plasticity. So I want you to take all of this information and check out the CIS membership if you haven't yet, because the CIS membership price is going to be going up in 2024. So in January 2024, it'll be going up, but not for current members. Your rate stays the same. So if you're already a member of CIS, if you join before 2024, you have your low rate that never goes up. But for those who are joining after the rate will be increased. And that's because I am doing some major up levels in 2024. So make sure to check out the CIS membership today. If you don't like it, then you can simply unsubscribe. However, the rate is coming out, going up very soon. The CIS membership is wonderful. Myself, I am a member. I use the materials every week. They make my life really, really easy, and the children are making great gains. I encourage you to check it out. If you join after January 1st, 2024, the rate is going to be higher. The rate is going up on January 1st. I want you to lock in at the lower rate. The rate is not going up for current members. That is always going to stay locked in at whatever their rate is. But if, if you're joining after January 1st, 2024, the rate will be higher. And that is because we are doing some major up-leveling to the CIS membership that is going to begin in January 1st. So thank you so much for being here at the drawing board with me. I hope to see you in the CIS membership. You will not be disappointed. It will save you tons of time and the materials are incredibly educationally rich and research-based and field-tested. So I want you to take all of this information, roll up your sleeves and make the world a better place. You are always going to be first.